Hello, welcome to Agents of Sigma. Um, we're not talking about a Warhammer or Gaze Workshop product today uh, for this little video. We're talking about uh, City of Zombies, uh, which is an excellent board game. Now, as uh, most of you who've been watching know, Pete and I are both parents uh, and we've got children uh, of primary school age, uh, so between four and eleven. Um, and um, this City of Zombies game is a brilliant game for uh, teaching you, or teaching your children, and you if you want you know, maths. Um, and um, and making it seem like fun. Yeah, that's the real the real key, yeah. I guess, is that they don't realise that they're learning uh, maths. So I think I bought this, or somebody actually bought this game for me long before I started uh, writing for Geek Dad. Um, but actually it was the, about the first review I did for Geek Dad because we love the game so much in our house. Uh, it really uh, is very good at inspiring the kids to to learn math so it teaches them addition subtraction multiplication even squaring numbers and combinations of, of all of those to to um, to achieve the aim which is to stop the city being overrun by zombies and then i think pete picked it up a little bit after possibly on my recommendation yeah um and i don't know how you found it with your kids yeah my my eldest was definitely into it more and he was having a little bit of struggle at school he's just eight now and he had real problems with his multiplications and all the school literacy now says, you know, they've got to have their multiplication tables down pat by the time they finish like the year he's currently in. So by the time they get to like nine years old and uh, you recommended it and we got it for him and he absolutely loves it. And uh, he's done it with, played it with his friends and we, you know, play it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. We, we play it a lot. Um, and uh, this, we do play it a lot, but there's a, a new version just come out, uh, which I don't know if you can see on the box, but this is the City of Zombies Ultimate Edition. Ultimate. Uh, now, I have to say, there's, there are actually, uh, there's the original version, and then there's what's called Times Square, uh, which I've only played a, a demo of, uh, and that's for like older or slightly more difficult maths. It has a D12 in it, because that's the other thing. The whole game is, is driven by um, D6, like all, all good games. So like D6. Um, and, um, oh, and I just realised, I said in my last, in the Blood Bowl unboxing, that it came with plastic bags. It's the mark of a good game. Lots of plastic bags. Anyway, sorry, yes, so they, yeah, it's um, driven by D6, uh, but the Times Square expansion is a D12, and... Uh, one of the beauties of this game, City of Zombies, the base game, is that you can play uh, different levels of maths ability alongside one another because they can both work within sixes because you, you know, adding one and four uh, is, is relatively simple, but uh, multiplying four and six is a bit more tricky, but the older one can do that. When you add the D12 in, I found it didn't work with my distribution of children because uh, the older one loved it. But uh, when the uh, younger one got uh, eight times six, he had absolute, or even eight plus six at that age, he um, he was a bit stuck. So you, Times Square is better for older children. I think I, I think I get stuck with eight times six. Actually, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so the um, the ultimate edition. Uh, I don't know if you've if you've played the existing uh, game. It, nothing much has changed really. Um, so, uh, you know, I have spoken to the uh, designer of the game, a chap called uh, Matthew Tidbury, and he was saying he wanted to simplify the rules. I mean, to be honest, the rules weren't on very many pages, but the whole lot is on just sort of uh, six sides of A4. That's a lot of pictures as well. Uh, so. it is, yeah, it's a lot of pictures. And he was saying he wanted to simplify it so that if you weren't a game player, um, you could easily play. I do remember when we first played, because played City of Zombies, I picked it up very fast, but we were playing with some non-game playing people and they were like, oh, what, what are you doing, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And so it is one of those things, you know, if you're used to decoding rules, the original set was easy, but a bit more tricky if you weren't. This uh, is a lot more simple. Uh, it's got lots of nice little examples, which are quite obvious to people who played it before. It's showing you how you can use the three dice. So you can use one dice for one thing and you can multiply two dice together or add them together to do another thing. So... Yes, it's just making it much easier and clearer to understand. Um, for those who haven't played, the idea of the game, this is the board. The idea of the board is that the zombies will come in here at the beginning and the uh, defenders, which is you guys, will be down here. And the zombies move down each turn unless you destroy them. And then over here, over where Pete is, there's the plane track and the plane is coming uh, for you, and each turn passes, the plane gets a bit closer. And it's, if you manage to defeat the zombies, 
before the before the plane comes, when the plane comes, then it takes you to safety. And as the as the plane gets closer, the zombies come up closer as well. So, as they come down the field, and the plane gets nearer to landing, they start appearing nearer to you. So it really starts to ramp the pressure up as to clear. Yes, because more zombies. arrive each turn, and if you haven't if you haven't cleared the previous turn, it does start to get a bit sticky on the barricades. And the way you destroy them is, um, you can see I've to take a couple here. So the way you destroy them is, uh, this is the zombie, he's got number six on him. So there are a number of ways of destroying this zombie if you roll your dice. You have to, in your go, you have to use all three dice at once. But uh, you can destroy more than one zombie at a time. So this one can be destroyed by using two dice to do two times three, or six times one, or five plus one. Or uh, if you had a trying to think of a different example, a four, a three and a one, you could do four plus three, take away one equals six. So there's lots of ways you can destroy this guy. And what's really neat is up in the corner with these X's, that's the multiplication tables that it uses. So you can tailor the game to use the particular ta types tables you want. Notice it's got some in blue and some in, blue, uh, some in red. Is that the combinations? Uh, so six I times one and two times yeah, three? Yeah, it could be. I don't, I don't actually know. <laughs> People will look that up in the rules and add a little tag on, on the bottom. Go across the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so that has the times that has all the times tables in. Uh, and then obviously the bigger the cards because some of the cards get quite big. Uh, number nineteen, and uh, you can see is uh, it's got a P in the top right hand corner because of course number nineteen is a prime number. Um, so again, it teaches them prime numbers, uh, which is a thing my oldest who he is quite into maths, I have to concede. Uh, was absolutely fascinated by the idea of a, of a prime number. This is number the number 12 zombie, and he's got 12 times 1, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. And oh, they're, they're, all, they're all, all in yeah. different colours. So that's a definite uh, addition from the, uh, pre, from the first edition of the rules. It means smaller uh, kids will be able to match the colours up a bit more, and they'll be able to see they've got uh, the two yellow numbers, so they can get yeah. rid of that zombie by putting those two on there. Yeah. Now, uh, it's not that's not all. There are as an extension. So you've got prior numbers. You've got addition, subtraction. Uh, this, this, uh, there's a clever rule because some of the dark, some of the zombies, one of the zombies is number thirty six. There's a clever rule where you can, uh, if you power called power up the dice, uh, where um, you basically square the dice. So to get rid of number thirty six, you could do two dice six times six, or you could power one of the dice up. Uh, and make it 36 on its own and again my boys were b both boys were fascinated by the idea of squaring numbers um, as they really like that in this new version there is the power glove which enables you to uh, cube one or more dice which enables you to kill this guy who's number 216 and when I was showing my children this my oldest was absolutely fascinated by the idea of being able to kill number 216 he's very much looking forward to having a game with it I haven't let him have a game yet um, and the other new thing in this one is uh, you can if, well, obviously these are for the expert rules uh, when you when everybody's comfortable with the game there is a dice which enables you to multiply uh, dice by minus one which enables you to kill the other new addition to this game which is negative number zombies which again we haven't played yet uh, but we're quite I like the fact that with the negative number zombies, they don't have the multiplication circle on them, but they've got a scale which yeah. goes from zero, uh, from minus six up to plus six. So it means to that help. again they can they can count down and yes, they, they teach the, that in school. They do the number the number line. line. They do number the number line. So. There are a number of other rules which I don't think will help to go into now. Um, I did write a pretty comprehensive review uh, on Geek Dad, uh, which um, if you're reading this on Geek Dad, I'll put the link in the in the body of the text. Um, and uh, I really do check this game out. It's a really great game. It, it, I, I think it's one to six. You can play. It, you can play it solo. My oldest likes to play it solo sometimes, uh, and up to six. Uh, but to be honest, any number of people can join in. And of course, the other thing is, which I didn't mention, I probably should have mentioned right at the beginning, is that it's cooperative. Yeah. So it's a cooperative game. So nobody loses it. Well, you either all lose if you get eaten, but actually, you don't very often get eaten. Um, nobody loses uh, in this game. Um, because you're working together, so yeah, your brother's brother can help brother, uh, which is what happens a lot, and to to get the best out of the dice they've got, it doesn't eliminate arguments because there's always arguments with <laughs> with children. Um, so one of them will argue over the best way to use the dice, but they don't at least at least not, one of them doesn't beat the other one, or specifically the one who's best at maths doesn't always beat the other one. You have to be a little bit careful to control uh, like the alpha player from controlling everything. Yeah. Um, 
there are some rules which um, say there are some special rules on cards say only the person who rolled the dice can, can choose them or you have to do it silently. We don't tend to play those so much, but you can do. What I do sometimes do is say to my oldest, you have to wait, let him see what he can do and, su and suggest you can suggest things afterwards, but he's allowed to choose what he wants to do. And that actual rule is actually in the it was in the original rule. I assume it's still in here. The person who rolled the dice gets to choose what you do. Yeah, so, everyone can suggest ideas of what they get to do, but the the roller themselves actually picks the final things, and yeah. it means the youngest people still feel like they've made the decision, even if they haven't come up with any of the results. They they still can feel like they are the ones who who actually got rid of the zombies so yeah and it's a really fun. nice that's a really nice thing that the the, the your, your ones who are better at maths get the opportunity to explain explain it and you they, that's good for them and then also you know they it's really nice to see the ones who are less good being brought up uh, to, um, to to sort of by their enjoyment of the game and it, it's a really good game I thoroughly recommend it um, and um, like I say, we, we love it and we, we play it regularly. Uh, and I'm thinking actually we haven't played it enough recently, so uh, this will definitely re rejuvenate our, our, uh, our gaming. I'm going to try and get my oldest on some negative numbers um, and see how we go. So that is City of Zombies, the Ultimate Edition. Thank you.